Hello and welcome to this very, very quick tutorial on how you can actually uh, build in an AI agent process with Kalunda. The idea here is they're building a process that is going to be able to, uh, through a, uh, various iterations, help us solve a problem. This particular problem is going to be how to choose a tech device of some kind. So I'm going to start off by creating a BPMN diagram. This is how all the processes basically start. Your BPMN diagram is where we're going to map out both your agent and the series of events that are going to help. So this is going to be called the, um, let's say, tech helper agent. And we are going to um, have a start event and an end event. This determines the scope of our process. So let's name them um, uh, query uh, asked and uh, query answered. Now this point is very important to uh, have a specific setting on before we start building this. Uh, Kalunda's AI agent tooling exists only for 8.8 uh, .8 and above. So you just select 8.8 .8 .8 and then you'll be able to uh, continue. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to drag a sub process right here and drag it in the middle of here. Okay. This sub process is actually going to be our agent. And the way we're going to uh, choose the agent is by selecting the sub process, going here to change element and selecting AI agent. Now I'm going to get rid of this sub process. So this now is where we're basically connecting an LLM. And inside of this sub process is going to be the toolbox that the agent is going to use. So this is our tech helper agent. So the first thing we need to do is we need to configure the agent itself. Now, if we look over here on the properties panel, we can see that we have to connect up, first of all, the uh, the model or the LLM that's going to be uh, used in this agent. And I'm going to use uh, Amazon Bedrock. And here on the right, we have the some details that are required. This is actually connecting up the LLM to our uh, model. So this is our, our first step towards um, uh, building our process and uh, you can choose from a bunch of different LLMs um, uh, I'm going to use bedrock because I have that and I've created a bunch of secrets in the secrets vault for that for this um, instance so I don't need to type them in uh, so that you lovely people don't get access to my stuff so instead I'm just going to um, select secrets and then I've created a secret with this name and it'll get that in runtime along with the access key the secret here and at the model I want to use as well. So I'm going to use uh, Claude 4. Okay, so this has connected up the model, uh, the LLM, sorry, to the BPMN model. And down here we also have um, uh, the, the agent system prompt, um, which I'm going to leave as default for now. Going down here, we have our user prompt. This is the input from the user. So this is going to be a request. And um, further down, we have some other bits and pieces, including the response. For now, I'm just going to tick um, include assistant message and uh, include agent contacts. So, so I'll have a lot more information. Um, this here, the response is basically the, the variable that contains what's going on with the agent um, as it executes. So I kind of want as much information as possible. That variable is going to be called agent. Okay, we now have the um, LLM connected. We still have that little red thing right there. And this means that we need some kind of tool for this agent because what we've done now is we've connected up an LLM, but it doesn't have any tools to execute to solve the problem. The first tool it's going to need, of course, is the ability to get the tech stuff it's going to display. Now, luckily, I have found this lovely REST API here. Uh, you can see it here um, at RESTful API.dev. Just a simple thing. If you query it, you get a list of tech devices. So I will be using that API. So if I go back here, how do I get the agent to call that API? Well, I'm going to start by adding a task. Adding a task to this sub process is the same as giving the agent a tool to be able to use. So once you do that, you add it, you select whatever tool you want. There's a whole bunch of tools. The rest um, a connector is one of them, and you can use that to uh, get list of text stuff. Okay, so that is the name of it. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to fill in some very important stuff. Um, the agent itself needs this documentation field. This is the natural language description of what this tool is for and what it's used. So I can write in saying this tool is used to get 
the um, uh, the list of all available tech stuff. Great. And now I need to actually explain how the call works. This is not the agent's concern. This is me basically putting in some stuff like, for instance, it doesn't need authentication. Here's the endpoint. It doesn't need headers and stuff. And the last thing we need is to tell the agent um, uh, or to get the, the response to the agent. The agent is always looking for a specific variable. That variable is called tool call result. Tool call result is the name of the variable that needs to be the output of every tool so that the agent then can assess it and see what to do next. And the thing it's going to want to do next is to show the user the thing it's learned about the tech stuff that it has access to. And to do that, we need to add a different type of task. This is going to be a user task because what we want to do is integrate with a front end. So if I choose user task, I then have the ability to display some information to the user. In this case, uh, show um, response to query is the name of the task. Now, as before, I also need to add element documentation here to show the agent what it's for, why we use this tool. So you say use this tool in order to um, display data to uh, the a user who made the request. Okay, and now we need to do something we didn't need to do in the rest call, which is we need to have the agent create some data, right? So I would like the agent to generate for me um, the list. Right now we have a JSON object, which is not that useful for the user. I would like the agent to display this in a nicer way to the agent, to the user. To do that, we go to inputs. And in inputs, we're gonna say, um, let's say um, user, uh, let's say result of query. Okay, and that's the local variable to create. And to create that, I'm going to uh, use this variable assignment value. I'm going to open this up. And in here, while we could create some static values or select the individual stuff from the JSON object, I want the agent to create a variable for me. And to do that, you need to type in from AI. And this opens up a function that it tells the AI that it needs to be generating some stuff here. And the first thing is um, it's going to create the variable name. So we need a variable called result of query. And this is telling the agent, create a variable in a, in a in tool call called result of query. And now you need to tell what it is. This is the result of the query made by the user. But more importantly, format this in Markdown. Okay, because I want to display it properly, I don't want to see the JSON. So now the agent should be aware that it needs to create a variable. Super. So now we need a response because what if the user has some follow-up questions? So next we go to output. In the same way before, here I had tool call result. I also need exactly that same variable here, but the difference is I'm going to specify what that is. In this case, a response from user and it's going to be the result of response from user. So we now have two variables that are going to be needed for this task. The first one is a result of query and the second one is response from user. To display the input and to get the output, we need to create a form. That's quite easy. I'm going to select the user task up here. I see link form and I'm going to create one because I don't have any right now. And here's the form builder. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in this little text box and I just want this to be whatever the agent has decided this is. So this is going to be a result of query. So this is the markdown that will be displayed to the user. Then we need to get the user's follow-up question. To do that, I'm going to just have a text field. It's going to be follow-up question. And this needs to be the variable that the output is expecting, which is, um, I think, response from user. Response from user. Cool. So now we have the uh, input from the AI and the response from the user. And let's go back to the diagram. I'm just going to make sure that I got that response from user thing correctly. There we go. Okay, so now we've given 
the agent all it needs to fulfill the request. It can get the list of stuff and display the list of stuff, but actually it's a bit deceiving because it can do a little more than that. I'm gonna showcase that in a few seconds when we now go and deploy this. Deploying is quite easy. I need to click deploy and run. But one thing we do need to know is we have a prompt that we need to give. So when we run it, we need to make sure to give the request. So once I click deploy and run up here, you'll see that I'm, I'm asked for an ex for, to add some JSON example. I am going to add a little JSON that says uh, request, and it's going to say, um, can you show me the list of all text stuff? Okay, and I'm going to click deploy and run. Boom. So once we do that, we can then go to the specific instance that we just started and we can see that it's already arrived here. It's the token is sitting here, which means it's in the middle of deciding what to do. And it's already decided to trigger this get text stuff. So that means it's made the rest call. And then it's also then now gone and it's going to show that to the user. So we can see what it's decided to do. So if I go to open this, I can go to the user task. And we can see this is the tech stuff that we have. Here are the smartphones, audio devices, computers, and so on that the agent has been uh, has has developed for us. So, and I mentioned already that it can do more than just what the tool suggests because one of the things I can do is ask a follow-up question: Can you compare the um, phones in more detail? So I'm going to complete that. Now the cool thing about this is that the process is going to move on. It's going to uh, move on from this user task and the agent is now deciding what to do. Now it doesn't need a tool to compare these things because it already has all the data it needs. So what it'll probably do is it'll probably think, okay, well, I'll just think about this for a while. I'll compare them and then I'll create a response for the user. I actually don't need to trigger any more tools because it also uses the LLM's own feature set. We can see here that once again, we have gone back to our user task and here we can see that detailed phone comparison where you see that the agent has used its own sort of LLM understanding to compare that information. Information that was not possible, that it didn't actually get from here, but rather is using its own initiative. That's kind of the power of being able to implement these AI agents within a tool set. When you do add them in here, they're far more powerful than just the tools individually. And yeah, hopefully that's a good getting started experience. Enjoy. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.